Hi there, I'm Ben Mankiewicz. Welcome to Silent Sunday Night on TCM. This month, which ends with Halloween, is not really Silent Sunday Night. It's Silent and Deadly Sunday Night. We're going to start with one of the creepiest and most influential horror films ever made. From German director F.W. Murnau in 1922, Nosferatu. This is what is believed to be the big screen's first depiction of Dracula. But we can't say Dracula, or at least Murnau and his partners couldn't. We actually can. Dracula. The original plan was for this to be an official adaptation of Bram Stoker's best-selling novel about the Transylvanian vampire, Count Dracula. But when a deal couldn't be reached to purchase the screen rights, Murnau and his team pushed on, simply changing the title, the names of some of the characters, and other incidental odds and ends here and there. And if you're wondering, can filmmakers really do that, steal a book that way, the answer is no, they can't. Though the vampire was now called Count Orlock, Bram Stoker's widow still sued the German production company and she won. A judge ordered all prints of Nosferatu destroyed. Fortunately, a technicality kept Nosferatu alive. The judge's order was largely carried out in Germany, but one copy did get to the United States where Stoker's novel was in the public domain and therefore immune from the judge's order. Anybody could make a Dracula movie. Since then, all copies of this vitally important horror classic have been spawned from that one surviving U.S. print. You're probably vaguely familiar with the story. A young man goes to the castle of a strange nobleman to sell him a piece of property. The nobleman turns out to be a vampire. Bad break there. Blood is sucked. Necks are bit. For generations, horror fans have been obsessed with this film, as they should be. It is a memorably visual piece of storytelling and a forefather to nearly 100 years of cinematic horror. From F.W. Murnau in 1922, here it is, Nosferatu. When released in 1922, Nosferatu was moderately well received, but its stock has soared considerably in the nearly 100 years since then. During the 1970s, German director Werner Herzog, who Francois Truffaut once called the most important film director alive, described Nosferatu as, quote, the greatest film to ever come out of Germany. In 1979, Herzog honored it with a stylish remake starring Klaus Kinski. If you have not seen Herzog's remake, do yourself a favor and find it. Another film to check out, Shadow of the Vampire from 2000, starring John Malkovich as Nosferatu's director, F.W. Murnau, telling the story of the making of the film with a significant twist. Shadow of the Vampire asks, what if Max Schreck, the actor who played the vampire, was actually a vampire? Willem Dafoe plays Schreck, and as I said, it's well worth seeing. Coming up, this week's edition of the TCM Import. Tonight, a pair of French films, both set near the sea. 